Hello, I'm Jeff Blanchett, President of Tonic Travel. I'm currently aboard Atlas Ocean Voyages World Navigator, returning to Ushuaia, Argentina, after an extraordinary visit to the seventh continent, Antarctica. In this video, I will share my experiences on the continent and on board Atlas Ocean Voyages World Navigator. The journey began in Buenos Aires with a charter flight included in the cruise fare to Ushuaia. If you have some time, spend a few days in Buenos Aires prior to your embarkation day. It's a wonderful city with interesting sights and delicious cuisine. After a short bus ride from Ushuaia's airport to the cruise port, I was welcomed on board World Navigator. It's about a two-day sail to reach Antarctica. During that time, the expedition team offered several interesting lectures, including an overview of what to expect. This trip is all about flexibility. It's the weather and the ice conditions that dictate what is possible. So there is always a plan B, and a plan C, and a plan D. We were very fortunate with weather as we sailed south and were afforded a stop in the South Shetland Islands after only a day and a half. From the South Shetland Islands, we set a course for the Antarctica Peninsula and our first look at the great continent. At the heart of the Atlas Ocean Voyage experience is the expedition team. The expedition team plans one morning and one afternoon excursion each day. The excursions begin in the mud room where you put on your boots, supplied by Atlas, you don't have to pack your own, your parka, also supplied by Atlas, and yours to take home, and your life vest. Once suited up, you board a Zodiac for either a shore landing, a Zodiac cruise, or both. Once ashore, the expedition team will guide you on a walk or a hike, depending on your level of comfort on uneven surfaces. And if you're not comfortable on the rocky shores or slippery slopes, they will give you a Zodiac cruise that will bring you up close to nature. The expedition team takes great care with your safety. When getting in and out of the Zodiacs, team members provide close assistance and they do the same on shore. They also have extensive knowledge about Antarctica and are enthusiastic about sharing that knowledge with you. In addition to the Zodiac excursions, that are included in your fare, there are optional excursions including kayaking, stand-up paddleboarding, and even an overnight camping experience on shore. Toward the end of this video is my interview with Jonathan Zachariah, the expedition team leader on board World Navigator. His experience in Antarctica is fascinating. In the interview, Jonathan shares his experiences and preparation and execution of the excursions ashore. On board World Navigator, the ambiance is casual and relaxed. The staff is the essence of warm hospitality. They know your name and your drink preference, and drinks, by the way, are included. The dining room offers a wide variety of choices. Each evening, the dinner menu features the cuisine from a particular region of the world. In addition, there are everyday menu items always available and, of course, room service. And if you want to treat yourself to something special, the ship does have a lovely spa. So why travel to this remote continent, which is, for most people, very far from where they live? The best way to answer that is to share some of my photos taken with only my iPhone with you. Please keep in mind that no photo, no matter how good the camera, can truly capture the awe-inspiring beauty of the seventh continent.
I'm on board the World Navigator today with Jonathan Zachariah. He is the expedition team leader of this amazing ship. Jonathan, can you share a little bit about your background and what draws you to lead Antarctica expeditions? So first of all, in a, in a former time, I was uh, a science engineer and this work brought me to work in Antarctic stations. So for those who have watched the movie The March of the Penguin, I uh, have been there at the, ex at the exact place where the movie has been shot for an entire year. And my job was to work um, in atmospherical measurements. I was working on the ozone layer. Um, and after this experience, where I learned how to walk on the sea ice, I learned the cycle of these amazing animals, the Adelie penguins, Amper penguins, seals. I saw when are seals giving birth on the sea ice and all the, sets, the cycle of nature during an entire year. And then during a winter, Antarctica is fantastic because you see and learn all about the cycle of nature, but you stay at one spot and you can go as far as your feet can bring you. And I wanted to discover what was around the corner. So working on ships was a good opportunity. Now I'm doing this for 10 years and I lead trips in the Arctic and Antarctica. That's amazing. Um, there is, there's a great deal that I've seen that goes into uh, preparing and planning for a Zodiac landing when you're bringing guests ashore. Can you tell us about what you're thinking about and how you create that process and execute that? So this process is uh, a routine. It is uh, uh, it's very easy. First, uh, you check where you have good weather. As I always say, the, the idea is to be at the right place at the right time and doing everything to avoid being at the wrong place at the wrong time. The weather forecast on a short range, 24 hours in advance, is amazingly precise nowadays. So we can really count on that. Sometimes we still have a few surprises, but uh, it is very reliable. For that reason, there is no schedule or plan uh, a week in advance or a year in advance so it's good when the catalog of a tour operator is very open because it leaves uh, flexibility to us to offer the best and seize uh, good opportunities and so 24 hours in advance we say hey we go to that area and in that specific area where we have good weather the core of my work is to study a lot the features of the coastline where you can land, where you have places of interest with some wildlife, where you can offer maybe a hike, where you can have um, places about history. And so on my map, I place a lot of uh, uh, pins uh, where uh, I know by studying scientific publication, by reading books, uh, where are the good stuff. And in a specific area where we have good weather, I say, oh, Tomorrow we can we can we can go there. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and lastly, um, can you share with us what you personally enjoy about uh, leading your team and bringing guests to shore? So, what I enjoy personally in this work is the creativity because it is you create a day. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. If I was running these voyages like a bus tour, I guess I would be very bored very quickly but each voyage is really completely different and sometimes and this is actually very interesting sometimes we can really explore and go to places that are extremely rarely visited and this is what I enjoy the most the, the, the most in, in my work it's very creative and sometimes I know that this place on the map one day I would like to go to discover that and maybe it's going to take a year two years three years before having good conditions before being at the right place at the right time and boom suddenly magic happens and we can share this with everybody on board and this is for me the uh, the most exciting part of this work jonathan thank you very much it has been such a pleasure speaking with you today um, your expertise on board and that of your your whole team uh, has really made this voyage very special thanks again thank you so we're here today with uh, two gentlemen who did one of the most interesting excursions that Atlas Ocean Voyages offers, and that is camping ashore on Antarctica. So I've got to ask you both, why did you decide to do this? Yeah, I think it's 
<laughs> we said at one point this is less than once in a lifetime <laughs> because coming to Antarctica is is already the one in a lifetime thing and then sleeping on Antarctica with with nothing nothing around it's just just you I, we, we just wanted to take the chance to to do it and like when when we booked this trip the first thing we told the organizer was we want to go to Antarctica and if it's possible we want to sleep there and even if it would be possible to build an own igloo and sleep in that igloo so most of it came true <laughs> 